I was in Utter Legends for four years and it was every Saturday, so it's sort of a massive part of my life that's gone. And I, like, I was really close to the youth workers we had, Warren and Abdul. I think out of about, there was about 20 staff, I think only maybe four or five people got jobs initially on redeployment. So it's nothing at all related to the youth service really. So it's a totally new job, but quite fortunate in that I'm one of the only four or five like Abdul who got a job at the end of it. Yeah, and I think, um, well I got a job working for the youth offending team, which is similar, but it's not youth work. Um, we've been, since the youth service, obviously the, um, there hasn't been any youth work provided by the city council, other than through voluntary organisations. Um, but we've been kind of lucky as well because we've been getting work through um, Ellen Square uh, in partnership with the YMCA. This is the Saturday. last Saturday, yeah. yeah. Um, that it's almost like it's a bit of a waste of why I studied for 15 years or however long it's been. It may well be that we're in austere times and nobody can deny there was a banking crisis which caused huge financial difficulties across the country. But local government workers weren't the cause of that financial crisis. But local government workers are being the ones who are meant to pay for that financial crisis with our jobs. And that impact in Newcastle, where one in three mem members of, uh, uh, of the city work in local government, is quite severe. You can't lose, which is the projection, 1,300 jobs over three years and the impact on the local economy. You know, if people don't have money, people won't have money to spend. So people won't go to their hairdressers, people won't use taxis people won't go to the shops and therefore to even think that there'll be private sector growth. Well, how can there be? Because people won't have any money to spend. We're at the Miners Hall in Durham and we've come the night before the gala to a People's Assembly where we're discussing what's next in the fight against austerity measures. I work in education. Do I do something about education? Do I do something about welfare? Do I do something about disability? It feels like a massively onerous task. They're so well planned. Why are we here today? Because I think it's very important we all stand up to be counted before there's nothing left to be counted for. I don't know who I'm going to vote for. I'm definitely going to vote because I think it's ridiculous to not vote, especially if you're a woman like a hundred years ago, people are still dying to have a, a, the right to vote. I've fundraised for Tyneside Rape Crisis and Northumberland. I just think the service they offer is integral to women in the community that have faced rape and sexual violence. Um, I'm comparing the comedy event. I hope we'll raise a good bit of money and hopefully raise the consciousness of a lot of the people in the audience. Since the cuts came in, we are seeing five less women a week. That is how the cuts have affected our services. I don't want to discourage women from coming to use our services, but we do have waiting lists that impact how long women have to wait to access counselling. We are responding to the need, but we are constantly at capacity. The Rape Crisis Centre is something that's quite important to me. Um, my life's been affected by rape and I think it's essential that places like that exist but it's also essential that places like that continue to be funded and they need to know that there's a safe place to go. I'm an artist primarily. There's so few financial grants and awards left within the arts now that there's so many people scrabbling for them that competition is really fierce. Today we're making placards for the demonstration on Sunday the 29th uh, in Manchester, which is the Tory party conference. People depend on the NHS. It's just being sold off. People are going to make millions out of it. The clinical commissioning groups, uh, the closed bodies, they have open meetings. They have meetings where the public are supposed to be allowed in. And you can ask questions, but you, they cannot ask questions about how the come to their decisions. I'm making my placard for the demonstration at the Tory party conference on Sunday. I think ideally I'd like them to take notice, but again it's not it's not their cup of tea, you know. Investing in public services can't make a profit out of it. I think if somebody worked it out it actually costs 
less to send somebody to Eton than it does to send them to youth detention centres. As an artist, it's, it's kind of difficult to sort of be part of a trade union um, where you've got any kind of collective action. So what I try and do within my own practice is involve other people and get a sense of community and a sense of being part of a collective by organising events or being part of events like the North East People's Assembly um, where I can sort of share ideas and share concerns with other people. Well, the People's Assembly is, is a national movement and the point is to be a grassroots movement. People here who are uh, having to make choices which Tory millionaires would never have to make there's 25 billion pounds every year that is avoided or evaded by the people at the top. The amount that was spent on bailing out the banks was close to 800 billion pounds. People ask us in years to come, what were you doing when workers were suffering the longest squeeze in living standards since Queen Victoria sat on the throne of this country? He's the branch secretary of the Newcastle City branch. One of the activities we took part in was supporting the People's Assembly in Newcastle. Um, I spoke um, in the opening session there. So only this week we had the Prime Minister stating in Parliament that unemployment had dropped. Hooray! Yet figures published in the North East show an increase of 5,000 people, giving an unemployment rate of 10.4%, the highest rate in the country. I think as young people we just, we need a new deal. I actually had a hell of a job getting today off because, you know, I'm ex expected to plan my life around when I might or might not get shifts. I think the worst was two hours notice for an eight hour shift and they see that to be reasonable. On top of it you have no sick pay, these shifts are used to either praise or punish and there is just no stability. People have to earn a wage that, that they can live on and if people take a numerous amounts of part time little bitty jobs then they don't have, they don't have enough money to earn and some of our are real low paid women you know who work in school kitchens and are cleaners they come to work they start work at six o'clock and they don't get back home until after seven o'clock because they work split shifts and that that can't be good for anybody that can't be good for their family and it certainly can't be good for them we might not all share the same politics but what we do share is a, a common idea of fairness and justice and that's what we need from this government at the moment we need a fair financial settlement for newcastle as well as being involved in the anti-cuts network, I'm also a council worker and I'm a union and steward in my workplace in children's services. So, um, you know, a lot of the cuts we're facing are cuts to kind of public services. So, Unison helped support the anti-cuts march. You know, um, paid for street closures, um, helped pay kind of for the for the PA system. So, getting the Unison branch on board for resources is important. But also, kind of Unison's got kind of seven thousand members you know and across it's got members in health and education so actually getting the message out through through the unions is really important we have to start to turn unions outwards and i think unison starting to do that in terms of building coalitions with the public but you can do it wear a hat so, yeah. i'll ask us what we did when hundreds of thousands of people were punished by the failure of successive governments to build social housing by forcing them to cough up for a spare room Two thirds of those people being disabled. Well, I'm forty pound worse off a month for a box room. It's really struggling. People shouldn't have to just manage. You know what I mean? And I sit with me heating off quite a lot. You know, you sit there with a the queen with fifty-eight bedrooms or something, and she's not paying bedroom tax. There's people who's absolutely on their bum with nothing, no money. Is basically being well penalised for bedroom tax. You know, and it's not fair. It's just unfair. I've lived in that house seventeen, eighteen years now, and I shouldn't have to pay it. You know what I mean? And I have worked when I've lived there. Do you know what I mean? It's a horrible, horrible tax to bring in because it really does, it divides and rules as well because there's people on our estate who are looking to see when a, a flat becomes available and they're trying to see if they can get in there as quickly as possible and then when they don't get the flat they start to sort of point the finger at other families think well why did they get it and not me and it's awful, we don't we can't afford to fight amongst ourselves. It's not our fault that we're, we're having to live in this situation. It's been imposed upon us. Having set about dismantling the NHS, the Tories now want to dismantle free speech. This lobbying bill is all about silencing opposition to the coalition and silencing it well. They want to silence trade unions. They want to silence Greenpeace. They want to silence hope, not hate. 
Instead of building this big society, Cameron wants to gag it. It's just fantastic to see so many people turning out to voice their views and to, to feel like they have an opinion and that it's valued. And I think an event like the People's Assembly is really going to do that across the country, but specifically the North East, which, you know, at times, we're, we're, for lots of reasons, we haven't got a voice nationally. I think the important thing for all of us now is action. We've had all the words, we've had all the rhetoric. What we actually want now is action because the situation has deteriorated now, hour by hour. So Unison and the TUC organised a march in Manchester uh, as a demonstration around the Tory party conference and we organised four coaches to go down from this branch. The Conservative government are making massive cuts to um, services and everything really and it's just affecting like my job and my education and where I live and the NHS which I use and just everything. We had a demonstration very carefully planned when the House of Lords were discussing the regulations which was one of the final nails in the coffin of the National Health Service. I'm just passionate about the National Health Service, I'm horrified by what they're doing to it. I'm old enough to have some recollection of what things were like before we had a National Health Service. Yes, and we don't want to go back there. It was not good for people. Not good. 82 and a half. <laughs> we're at the front of the march and it's all about a kick off. Oh, yes. <laughs> Trade unions are the largest organised group in civil society. So one of the things we can do is, is, is actually use that organisation, use that membership um, to try and affect change as much as we can do. It's just I have children, I've used the NHS myself, my parents did through illness and everything that's so important for all of us to have access to all these facilities. I only want to do the right thing. All I'm going to do is I'm going to run the NHS into the ground, making it look like it's not working properly, and then I shall sell it to all my friends. Send it out of Monaco! Send it out to Monaco! No whips! No bugs! No NHS cuts! No whips! When the union link is under threat, it's important that people get involved in the union and then start campaigning on the issues that really affect young people, like zero hours contracts, minimum wage being too low for 18 year olds, etc. One, I'd be crazy not to join in. I think it's between 50 and 60,000, they estimate. I do think the numbers are really important and the, and the di diversity of people on the march in that it's actually ordinary people. I've seen people in wheelchairs, saw a 92-year-old woman sitting at a bus stop saying, cut Trident and save the NHS. It's very distressing and it's all, it's, people are not actually speaking enough about how cruel and how actually immoral what is happening is. I've worked in an advice centre for a very long time and people are just dead. I mean, we had to shut, <laughs> but... Uh, the people that used to come to that advice centre are just desperate and I just think what's happening to the country needs us to make as much noise as possible. <laughs> people are actually coming out and trying to physically do something to stop what they don't want happening. But it's just really endearing to see so many people come together to try and make something change. Red, red, red. Under the European Convention of Human Rights, Article 8, Protocol 8, the bedroom tax is illegal. 
no state has the right to interfere with your settlement and your enjoyment in your home. If you're born after 1986, you would have to work till you're 105 just to get the pension that we get today. So many losers, it's un unbelievable. Well, if nothing else, the fact that I've not surrendered because we're all very tired and we're all very fed up and I just, if nothing else, we're not surrendering. How much is this all costing the country my skin to protect this man from himself? Because let's face it, it's his policies he's having to be protected from. He's destroyed the health service, he's destroyed education, he's destroyed local communities. He doesn't give a toss about the disabled and if he thinks for one minute people like him with those kind of policies is going to get back into office, he's had it. The NHS is, um, is one of our best uh, achievements in society and what the Tories want to do is to take away free NHS. Those that can afford it will get health care, those of us that can't afford it won't get health care. So this is about taking the message out um, to the public and saying that, well, the trade unions aren't happy about that. We think there's a better way. Like the idea that we would take healthcare away from people because they don't have enough money to pay for it is like absolutely disgusting. And the, like we, we've we've seen like healthcare systems in America, which actually the Conservatives have been using to kind of champion their their move towards privatisation, and. The way that like poor people are left with, like in fear. Privatisation isn't working. It's not working for staff. It's not working for the welfare system. And it's, it's not working for it's not working for patients. We've heard today from doctors. We've heard from nurses. We've we've heard from um, service users. We've heard from patients that the cuts in the NHS, the cuts in the jobs in the NHS, is really having an impact on the quality of service. The thought of private health companies bidding for taxpayers' money that should be going directly to the NHS is disgusting. Um, and the thought that this has all happened without consultation of the public is absolutely shocking. Film this and share it. So we retweet it and get it out there on social media. You know, all the unions were there, all the campaigns was there. The, the event felt really upbeat to say we were here with a really important message. So I'm really pleased that we brought so many people from, from Newcastle. But I'm really pleased to see such a national turnout. We've definitely made ourselves heard. And I'm hoping that we've inspired some people to kind of keep going with this because it can be a long, gruelling process getting into activism. But I think we've really made a difference today. I think if you are part of a collective, and you respond in any way that you can, and that's from filling in a petition online to say I don't agree with the changes, to you holding a meeting if you so feel comfortable, to you be part of a massive rally and demonstration, to you going to one of those PSA meetings. I think that's how we make a difference, but I think the way they've made the biggest difference is by doing it together and showing just exactly what that strength of feeling can bring, because when we do it together, like the rally showed, it, it has a huge impact.